Today's video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X, your Mac as good as new. Hey, it's Chris. Now, over the years, I've produced some really great, unbelievably useful Mac app videos. In fact, one of them is creeping up on a million views right now. But this episode has the best, I, I would say, collection of unbelievably useful Mac apps we've ever done. I'm sure this is gonna be another long video, so just so you know, there's timestamps down in the description if you wanna skip around to whatever interests you the most. There's also a link down in the description if you wanna buy me a coffee as an extra thank you if you end up really liking this and finding it useful. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, the Daily Tech After Party now is a great time. I basically hate email apps, except for the one I'm about to tell you about. Now, picture an email app in your head, and then picture how it might be different if you're gonna make a different kind of email app. No, nope, still looks pretty similar to the first one, right? Well, picture now Tempo, which is the one I'm gonna show you right now, and it smashes your conception of what an email app looks like and does. Tempo kind of reminds me of like a really minimal iPad writing app, like IA Writer, that suddenly sprouted some email features. Because it's so minimal and uncluttered that the second your brain sees it and makes contact, it just feels super freeing. The entire point of this email app is to keep email from taking over your life, making you less productive, and get rid of that email dread. You know, like sometimes you don't even wanna check your inbox because it's gonna take up so much of your time, be such a time suck. So aside from just visually looking really stunning and minimal and simple, there's also some other things that it does to help you take control of your email. Number one is it only shows you your emails at specific times of the day, like maybe in the morning or at 4 p.m. so that you're not constantly checking it all throughout the day. Also, it can help you limit your replies to like 140 characters, kind of like a tweet. And on top of that, it will help you kind of create a priority out of your inbox by marking things as to-dos or something to snooze or something to just straight up archive. Now, I typically hate email apps that try to make it into like a to-do list, but I'm serious. This doesn't feel like that. It really is awesome. And then get this, there's even a focus mode. So when you're replying, it can just like get rid of all the distractions, uh, just like a minimal writing app. I just love it. Guys, I really did not want to feature an email app ever on this series because that, that's too boring. It's just not something that fits with the, all the other cool apps. But this one deserves a place on this list and the top spot in this episode. Please check it out. I mean, it's that cool. And by the way, um, it's sort of an incomplete experience because it's so new in terms of not having a matching iOS app yet. But it's something that they're working on. And I got to tell you, I can't wait for it to come out. The second app that we're talking about today is a workhorse. It's powerful, it's called Station. And this is for everybody who's always like, man, I thought these apps were all gonna be free, even though I never said that in the title. This one is free, so you're welcome. And look, I'm always looking for a way to use my screen real estate as efficiently as possible, even with that 49 inch super ultra wide monitor. And that is why this application is so awesome to me. What it is, in a nutshell, is it's an alternative browser that puts all of your business apps together under one roof. This app is so great that among all the awesome products that end up on Product Hunt all the time, if you haven't checked out Product Hunt, shout out Product Hunt, go check them out. It's where I discover a bunch of the cool things I discover. But it made Product Hunt product of the year. So yeah, this thing is major. So the main gist here is that you get a smart dock that lives on the left side of the browser that organizes all your business apps. So think Gmail, Google Drive, Slack, Trello, Dropbox, Hangouts, and literally hundreds more, all inside one app, instead of being in their own windows clogging up your whole workspace, like Trello. I'm a huge Trello user, and so I always have that open, but now I can just have it open inside of this, and I like that better. Now there's actually over 600 different apps that are compatible that integrate with Station. But I wanna be clear, this is a lot more than just a fancy wrapper for those apps. 
For instance, you can turn on the do not disturb mode and mute all the notifications from all the apps. Or there's multi-account support, so if you use more than one Google account, for instance. There's also unified search, so you can search through all your documents from multiple Google Drive accounts. So there's a lot, right? And then there's my favorite two features, maybe, which are the recents view or button, which if you hover over that, you'll be able to see all the pages and stuff that you just access really quickly. And number two, the ability to bookmark something within each app, whether that's a specific file or page or folder, it just saves a lot of time. So just to give you an idea of how I'm using this, some of the things I've got set up include Google Drive, Trello, Twitter, Pocket, WeTransfer, Buffer, Unsplash, FreshBooks, Stripe, and the list goes on. Station, I feel like it really could revolutionize how you interact with your business app landscape and help you feel like you're in more control, like over notifications in particular. Let's talk about a note-taking app next that's super different than anything I've ever seen. Now, I love Apple Notes. You guys know that. I made a whole video with Apple Notes tips, which is still very relevant. You should definitely check it out. I'll try to link it up. But, you know, the reason that I love it is because, number one, it just works across all my devices for the most part. And number two, I feel like my stuff's probably going to be a little bit more private and secure within the Apple ecosystem rather than just some third-party developer, right, having my data. That said, I don't love Apple Notes because it's, beautiful, but Side Notes is a truly standout note-taking app that is worth mentioning here because it really does do something different. Namely, it puts your notes on the side of your monitor. Why is this awesome? In one sentence. Here it is. I love that I always have my notes accessible and in front of me no matter what I'm doing, always, while at the same time, they never take up any extra space on my screen or clutter things up. Because while they do attach to the side of your monitor and you can choose what side you want them attached to, kind of like the dock in macOS, you can have it auto hide and then reappear whenever you put your mouse in the exact right spot, which is brilliant. I wish Apple Nose did this. The other thing that I really like is that I can easily see the contents of several notes all at once. So that's very nice for like referencing one and typing in another, whereas something like Apple Notes maybe shows you a preview of other things in the menu there, but you'll really only see the contents of one note at a time. So aside from living on the side of your monitor, which is the main feature for sure, you also get some fairly typical but important note app features like folders, to-dos, the ability to add pictures, there's keyboard shortcuts, and, and more. One thing that's not typical though, that I really like, that I think a lot of you will too, is that you can add a color stripe down the side of your notes. And there's several colors to choose from, sort of like when you add a color to a folder in Finder on your Mac. So it's really easy to make one of your notes visually stand out compared to the others. One thing that's holding this back just a little bit right now, at the time of filming this, is that it only has a Mac app version. So there's no companion app for your iOS devices but it's coming, it's in the works. So once that hits, I can see so many people jumping on board. The other thing I really like is that it's not a subscription setup like so many other things. I'm thinking about like Bear, for instance, which is a great note-taking app, but I don't like that subscription model. So this is a one-time payment, which is awesome. So when macOS Catalina came out and it had Sidecar, which is an amazing feature, which I love, that lets you use your iPad as a second display, wirelessly for your Mac. I can't imagine that Duet Display or Luna Display were super happy about that because they had already been giving you that ability through their apps and hardware for years. But Luna Display did something very interesting. They kind of pivoted a little bit and I like what they did. Luna Display 4.0 now lets you use one of your old Macs as a second display as a second monitor for another Mac. So look, I'm about to upgrade my 2016 MacBook Pro to the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's in the works. And I'm gonna end up having this extra old Mac sitting around. And I'm guessing that other people are out there maybe doing exactly the same thing. And it's like, what are you gonna do with that old Mac? I mean, you can sell it, get a little bit for it, but maybe it's worth hanging on to and setting yourself up with a dual monitor setup. Or, and this is what gets me really excited here, you could use your old iMac, if you have one laying around, as a second display for your MacBook Pro. I've been waiting for so long to be able to do this. When I upgraded from my iMac to my MacBook Pro back in 2016, 
I tried looking for ways that I could turn my iMac into a display for that MacBook Pro and I couldn't figure it out. There was like no solutions until right now. This is the first time I've seen it. And so I'm so excited. There's nothing wrong with, even if the internals are sort of like outdated with your old iMac, there's nothing wrong with an old iMac screen, right? Still like beautiful and big and why not put it to use? Now you can. I've really come to appreciate having Clean My Mac X installed over the last year. And you can bet that I'm gonna have it installed on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. I love how it tells me things like battery draining apps and it lets me see at a glance how much memory is getting used on the system and it gives me the option to free up more with just one click. I'm also really appreciating the anti-malware feature, which is important as more and more Macs get sold and the Mac market becomes a bigger and more attractive target to bad actors. So whether it's malware, adware, or even ransomware, the database is regularly updated so the protection module always has your back. With a beautiful design and dozens of cleanup and tune-up tools in one convenient app, Clean My Mac X can help you delete system junk and hidden clutter, speed up your Mac. Now get this, it removes about 31 gigs of junk from the average Mac, so what are you waiting for? Give it a try using the link in the description. The next app that I wanna to talk to you about is called Lazy, and it's a simple app. What it lets you do is very quickly control everything in your environment that is a smart device using some simple commands on your Mac. So all your internet of things connected smart things, whether it's your blinds or your lights or your smart locks, whatever it is, right from your Mac. So check this out, it's getting dirty and you wanna start the vacuum. Keyboard shortcut, and the vacuum starts going. You don't even have to interact with Siri or anything. Or let's say you got a internet connected coffee machine and you're ready to start brewing it up. You've been up since 4 a.m. like me and it's five o'clock and you gotta really amp it up and get the day going. Start the coffee, keyboard shortcut. Do something with your Sonos speakers, keyboard shortcut. Start the fan, keyboard shortcut. Need to adjust the temperature in the office or at your house? Keyboard shortcut. <laughs> so the best thing about this is just literally that it's really fast and that it integrates with like everything. Works with Zapier, works with IFTTT, and there's nothing crazy that you have to like remember. Um, you know, there's just quick keyboard shortcut and type out what you want. You could like type out that you wanna send a specific text message to somebody or add a recurring to-do thing in your to-do list. Like it goes beyond just your actual appliances, smart appliances, it integrates with like everything. So find your phone, boom, or send a message on Slack, boom, or arm the security system, boom. It's like that, it's super easy. Now, I'm in kind of a funny spot. Like I wish that I could go out and just use Safari as my browser for everything, or I, I could use something like Brave. I use Brave sometimes because it's a more secure and less obtrusive uh, version of Chrome than Chrome itself. But being in the YouTube Google ecosystem as a creator, like I'm pretty tied in there and certain things on YouTube, they just work better in Chrome. And I don't know if you have any apps like that, whether it's Google or whatever, that just you need Chrome like for your actual work. Well, here's the thing. I've been sort of on a mission to see uh, what I could do to sort of safariify Chrome. And one of the things that really bugs me in Chrome is that there's no reader view. Uh, of course, Google doesn't want to strip out all the ads and stuff. They want to show you that. That's part of their business model. But when I'm on Safari, that's one of my favorite things to do is just hit the reader mode, get rid of all the distractions, and I miss that when I'm over in Chrome. So I was so excited when I found an amazing plugin for Chrome that gives me that reader mode back. And it's not just reader mode. It's like reader mode on steroids. So it's reader mode, but you can design how it looks in the theme of the thing if you want to. You can also control like what gets displayed and what doesn't as part of the reader mode. And beyond that, and here's the part that I really, really, really like, even above just the more simplified reading interface, is that you can highlight stuff and you can take notes. Next, I just wanna make sure that you guys are aware of this app called Serene. It's on the verge of becoming publicly available, but maybe by the time you see this, it will be available. And it's kind of focused on teens, but I could see you using this individually as well. What it is, is basically a shield from all the distractions that could prevent you from getting some work done. And so some things, some solutions out there, maybe they block certain websites, or some maybe play like some ambient noise trying to get you in work mode. This does everything all at once and beyond that it also will ask you for a goal at the start of the day and then help you work towards that goal by shielding you from all the distractions next let me tell you about something called quick links this is just a brilliant small simple little app that does one thing um, it gives you a direct shortcut 
into something that you use frequently. So for me, there are certain files and there are certain folders that I access very frequently. So like for a long time, I've been using a scratch disk, like a two terabyte scratch disk to do all my video edits and stuff. And I'll drag a folder in my finder up to my favorites and try to stick it there. But because of the disk that I'm using, that external drive, it doesn't always stay. Sometimes that dumb thing ejects itself and I lose that favorite place. Um, and so something like this, where I don't even have to mess with that, just with the quick press of a key, I can get into uh, my videos folder and, or my Instagram folder uh, or my design folder for the daily tech uh, logo and assets. Um, to be able to do that with just a snap of my finger basically is amazing. And it's actually so cool. You can go in and you can drag and drop your stuff to create your shortcut. So it's very, very, very user friendly. Now kind of along the same lines, and it's really just gonna come down to preference for people, there's another app called Quick Access. And what it does is kind of give you a folder that opens up a little space where you can put different uh, files or folders or apps, whatever you need up there. It's almost like an extra dock. So again, a quick and easy way to access things that you need right away without having to dig around. Time saver. Now, if that seems too simple for you and you're like, no, I could go hardcore and really dive in and dig in and really do a lot more to automate and make like cooler, more powerful shortcuts, then what you need is something that you may have heard before. It's been out for a while, but it's new to me recently. It's an app called Keyboard Maestro. And basically, it's kind of like uh, Siri shortcuts for your Mac, but way more powerful and also a little bit less user friendly as well. Basically, in a nutshell, any task that you do or can do, you can automate, whether that's just opening up Gmail or pages or whether that's duplicating a, a line of text or even something like typing your email address. So you can launch commonly used applications or specific documents or rearrange windows or play music or handle email, anything in Keyboard Maestro. You can do it faster, easier, and more reliably. This is like next level stuff here. And by the way, I said it's a little bit less user friendly than like Siri shortcuts, Apple's official thing. That's probably true, but it also shouldn't scare you off. If you get in here, there's plenty of tutorials. And if there's something that you've always wished that the Mac could do, uh, it's very likely that this is the way that you can do it and that there's a tutorial that can show you how. Here's another simple app for you. It's called Fiend and it's caffeine for your Mac. Why is this awesome? So for somebody like me, the settings to prevent my screensaver or the power saving mode from uh, turning on, from shutting off my screen or my computer, putting it to sleep, are not long enough in certain situations. Sometimes when I upload a 26 minute video over a slow connection, uh, it can take so long, like half a day or something, depending where I'm at, that if my computer goes to sleep, it'll pause that upload to YouTube, and then you guys are waiting forever for the next video. Uh, but something like Thien, which is, it really is like caffeine for your Mac because it's almost like when you drink a cup of coffee, um, it's not a permanent effect, right? So when you turn Thien on, also it's not permanent. You can just say, uh, don't sleep or whatever for four hours or something. And then once that's done, you go back to normal. It's just like coffee because they say you never buy a drink, you just rent it, right? <laughs> You know what I mean. So you can say activate for one minute, you can say activate for 45 minutes, or you can say activate on startup. It's just really, really, really simple. It just does this one thing and has a few options, stays out of the way. I really like it. So when to use this? You can caffeinate when, watching or recording videos, listening to podcasts, doing a presentation at work or school, waiting for large files to download, talking to your friends, rendering sophisticated media files, observing live stats or long running tasks on your screen. As a coffee lover, all this talk about caffeine is making me wanna go out and buy like 12 nitros, uh, but that would be very dangerous, so I shouldn't. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a cool app. Here's a cool little app that I know you're gonna like. It's called Batteries Widget. And look, so much of the Apple ecosystem is wireless these days. Your keyboard, your trackpad, your mouse, your AirPods, whatever it is. And so this actually gives you one quick look to see what the battery status is for all of your wireless stuff. On top of that, it actually solves something that's really annoying for me, which is it'll give me a low battery alert for some of my devices. So like if my mouse is gonna run out of battery, it'll tell me so that I can get it charged before I get into a heavy video edit or something and it dies on me. How many times has something like that 
happen to you? Well, this will help prevent it. So it's actually very, very useful. Another super simple app here that I think a lot of people are gonna like is called Mission Control Plus by the same people from the last app that I just mentioned. And it will actually let you show all your windows like you do with uh, Mission Control, but then it will let you close them right from Mission Control. I don't know why this isn't built in to Mac OS in the first place, but this is just super handy. Cause sometimes just to do something, I gotta open up Finder and there's like, an old uh, folder open from when I installed something and that produced a preferences window. And there's just all this clutter that can build up in no time flat. So to be able to pop open Mission Control and just like selectively delete some stuff, not delete it, but close it really quickly, I like it. Time Bars is the next app that we're gonna be talking about. One thing that everybody could use a little bit more of, especially when it comes to productivity, is just a little bit of perspective. And I've covered similar apps to this in the past, but this one has its own unique spin, its take on showing you how much time left you have to do something. So whether it's showing you as a progress bar, you have this much time left in the day to do whatever you need to, or week, or month, or year, or quarter, whatever it is, um, this app just gives you a progress bar to let you know where you're at and how much time you have left. And what it basically is, is motivation in your max menu bar. Now I mentioned Safari earlier and being stuck in the Chrome thing because of YouTube, um, but if I was using Safari purely all the time, I would absolutely be using tab space. And what it is, is a way to organize all your different tabs very easily. So it works like this. You have five or six or 20 tabs open and you really like them and they're all geared around something specific. Like for me, it might be YouTube, YouTube stats, uh, and a few different views. Like, And so what you can do is save all your open tabs with one click and then restore them anytime that you want. So you can really build like a tab workspace around different uh, tasks or projects that you might be working on at any given time throughout your week. And on top of that, it also works as a web clipper for Safari. So if you highlight like a paragraph or something, you wanna save it, export it to your favorite note-taking app, maybe Bear, uh, you can do that too. Now, if you stuck around till the very end of this video, congratulations to you, my friend, because I saved something really good here so that everybody that dropped off early was gonna miss out and that you will be rewarded. Here is your reward. It's called Mackie, I believe that's how you pronounce it, and all it is is a super lightweight clipboard manager. It does one thing. It saves all the stuff on your clipboard, lets you easily access it, and it looks really good. I've seen clipboard managers before, there's a lot, and a lot of them are just ugly or they don't work well or look right or something. This just hits everything right on the head. So to summarize, it's fast, it looks good, you don't get overloaded with crazy features that you don't need, and it's secure and private. Boom, what else do you need? Hey, thanks for watching this video, guys. Check out the links in the description. Do consider checking out our podcast, The Daily Tech After Party. If you find our main videos here useful, I know you're gonna get more out of that. The link's down below. You should hit us up on Twitter and uh, Instagram. We're at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, in both of those places and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.